Hey guys and welcome to another episode of my ability system series. Today we will add the functionality to select enemies so that in your main widget you will be able to read the name and level of the selected enemy as well as seeing its health in detail so you not only see a bar but also the exact numbers of HP left. And our selection will also later be used to drive certain skills. For example when you want to use a projectile spell you need to select an enemy first and then the projectile will automatically hit that enemy. Alright, usually when something is selected, in most games you will see some kind of outline and that's also possible in Unreal. Unfortunately, the creation of the material for that takes some time, but luckily I was able to find a nice block entry about an outline effect using post-processing and he actually goes into detail about how this material is created, gives you a great breakdown if you want to create it yourself, but most importantly if you scroll down you will see downloads and then you can just download the material, the outline effect. The link for that will be in the description. So just download it, extract it and then you will see a folder called materials. Then you just need to copy and paste that into the content folder of your project if you want to follow along. Alright, once you did that you will see a folder called materials in here. Let's quickly rename that to outline effect. And then you will see a bunch of materials here. We will only care about the PP Outliner instance. And you can play around with the color here if you want. So let's make that a bit brighter. Hit OK, save it. Now in order to apply this material to various objects, what you need to do is search for post process volume. Drag that into your level. And in here we will search for unbound. Check that. So this means that our post process volume is not restricted locally. So every object here will be affected by it. And then what you need to do is search for materials, post process materials, let's expand that and we will add an element to the array here. We will choose an asset reference and search for our pp underscore outliner instance. And we can actually test that if we just select our player here and then search for render custom depth. We can check that for the mesh and you will see that little outline appearing. But we want to handle that dynamically, so let's turn that off. Instead, now let's go back to our skill system folder, blueprints, interfaces, and we will create a new blueprint interface called I underscore selectable. Double click. And this needs two functions basically. So, first one will be called on selected, it will have one input of the type skill character reference which will just be called player so the player who selected this actor and then another function called on selection end which will also have one input skill character called player all right compile and save our interface after we got our interface created let's go to our widgets main widget and here we want to add a border that will display the name, level and HP of the selected enemy. So search for a border. Anchor that to the upper center and let's call that enemy border. We will also make that a variable because we need to hide and show it based on whether we have an enemy selected. Let's clear the padding, set that to zero, expand the brush color and we will make that completely black. By default, the visibility will be hidden and we'll make it size to content. Also reset the position in X and Y to zero and the alignment in X will be 0.5. All right, and let's add a vertical box onto our enemy border. And here let's start with the text, which will just be the enemy name. Also make that a variable and horizontally align that to the center as well as vertically. For the default text we can just type in spider and then in brackets maybe level 9. Font type will be bold italic, maybe a size of 20 pixel. After that search for a size box, drag that onto the vertical box, check width and height override and we will set it to 450 pixel by 40. Then add an overlay, 
to the size box. And in the overlay we will add a progress bar, which we will set to fill. Call that enemy HP bar. We will also give that background image a slightly darker tint. Something like dark gray should work. And fill color should be red. Then let's search for another text. Add that on top of our overlay. And this will be the enemy HP text. Also a variable aligned to the center with a padding of maybe five to the top. Font size will be 16 and vertically it will be aligned to the top. Also let's give that an opaque shadow. And let's say the default text just reads 500 slash 500 full HP. All right, compile that and save. That's it for our main widget, so close it. Now let's open up our skill character. And here let's add a variable, which we will call selected enemy. This will be a master enemy reference. And another variable called player con ref. It's just a reference to our player controller that we'll need later. And this will be a skill player controller reference. This one we also need to set. So let's go to our event graph and look for begin play. Right before we do anything in here, let's get the controller of ourselves and cast that to the skill player controller. If that cast was successful, we can set our player con reference and afterwards proceed. Now we need a way of organizing that we only select one actor at a time and that we will do in our player controller. So go back to the skill system, blueprints, skill player controller. Give that another variable called selected actor. And that will just be an actor reference. Because the way we set it up with an interface also allows other actors that are not an enemy to be selectable. And let's grab our left click event, move that all the way to the right just so we got some space here. When we left click, you want to check whether the hit actor does implement interface and select our I underscore selectable here. Add a branch off of the return value. If it's false, that means we either just hit the ground or an actor that can't be selected, so we can just move. But if it's true, we want to add another branch and this time we want to check whether our selected actor is valid. So is there already one? And we also need to see that the selected actor does not equal the one we hit. Connect the end to the branch. If it's true, that means we have to copy over our selected actor and call on selection end. The player being our controlled character. After that, we need to set selected actors, so update that to the one we hit. So the hit actor of our break hit result, connect that to the false and to the true. And then off of the selected actor, we will call on selected. The player again being our control char. All right, another thing we have to do is clear our selected actor when we just click somewhere else. So after we cancel movement command, we can check whether that selected actor is a valid one. If not, just proceed with spawning the decal. But if it's true, so if we got one selected, we will drag that in and call on selection end. Player is our control character. And afterwards, we will set the selected actor to null. After that, we can spawn our decal. Okay, so that's it for the framework of selecting actors. Now we need to handle what happens if we actually select our enemy. Let's go into our master enemy, open the blueprint, go to class settings and add another interface, selectable. We will also add some variables here. So first off, we need a boolean called isSelected, 
question mark. And then we also need a variable called selecting player, which will just be a skill character reference. Then let's search for some free room here and we will search for on selected and use the event on selected. Now what should happen when this enemy is selected? First we need to add a check, so a branch to see that we are not dead because then you shouldn't be able to select the enemy. Is dead, then add a not and selected has to be false because we don't want to select an enemy that was already selected. Then connect the end to the branch. If it's true we first want to see our outline, so drag in the mesh and set render custom depth to true. Then also set the selecting player to the input, so the in player here. Off of the player we can then set selected enemy to ourselves. Also of course set is selected to true. Then let's get our selecting player, get the main widget and then we need to get our enemy border and our enemy name. First let's set the text of the enemy name and here we will use a format. So the format will be in curly brackets name then add a white space and in common brackets lvl dot and hit spacebar and then in curly brackets level you can just drag in our name and connect that to the name and get our level convert that to a text uncheck use grouping and plug that in for the level all right now we set the text also we want to call update health because later we will expand our function here so that also the health button in the main widget is updated and not only the small version on the enemy. And after we did that we just need to show our enemy border so set visibility to self hit test. Alright now search for event on selection end. And first off, let's just make sure that we are currently selected. So if that's true, we can just copy over our mesh and set render custom depth. But this time it will be false. Then we can set is selected to false. Set our selecting player to null. But maybe before we do that, drag in the selecting player, get the main widget and get the enemy border then set visibility of that to hidden connect that before we clear the selecting player because we are accessing that here and also one thing that we need to do off of our selecting player set selected enemy to null and after that we can clear the selected player. Alright, go into our update health buff function and after we did all of that we'll go into a branch, check if this enemy is selected right now. If false we can just return, but if it's true get the selecting player, get the main widget, get enemy HP bar, set percent to the percent that we are also using for our own health bar and also get the enemy HP text set text and like we always do we will use a format this time this will be in curly brackets current and hit spacebar slash spacebar and again in curly brackets max. Let's get our maximum health and our health. Convert that to a text. 
int and uncheck use grouping, copy over that node, plug it in for maxelf and then connect both of those to current and then to max. After we set the text, we can just return. And also one thing that we have to pay attention to is that when our enemy dies, we have to deselect it if it is selected currently. So let's go to the event graph to our on death event. Right up here it is. Maybe here before we set the collision enabled, let's add an if statement. Dragon R is selected. And connect that here. You can just hit control and drag that execution pin over to the branch. Also, of course, select everything after that and move it over a bit. So we check if we are selected currently. If not, we can just go into our set collision. But if it's true, we will call on selection end for ourselves. The player being our selecting player. And after that, go into the set collision enabled. All right, compile and save. And one thing you need to do before you can test this is go into your master enemy and on the capsule component, you need to set the collision presets to custom. And here in our trace responses, we need to set visibility to block. Otherwise our cursor won't be able to hit it. Then compile, save. And if we play now, we don't see any health bar in our main widget, but if we approach the enemy and select it, you will see that there is an outline. We see spider level two with 200 of 200 HP. And if we now cast a spell, you will see the health updating both on the spider and in our main widget. Also, what we can do here is close everything and copy over our spider by holding down alt and dragging it to the side. If we play now, we can select one and select the other one. See that updating. Also, if we just left click anywhere else, our selection is cleared. All right, thank you for watching. That's it for this episode. And in the next one, we will create the skill architecture for magic missile spells. See you then.